I think by now we all know that Gig Performer is best in the biz as a VST host, especially if you're a gig seasoned, slightly leathery and beer stained live performer. Well, the party was nice and the party was jumping. Oh, yeah, B-I-O. But gigging might not be your thing. You might be into sound design or playing around with hardware synths, software synths. Um, creating soundscapes of atmospheric oceans, of waves and signs, modulating in droplets of... Um... So, the only way you could do that really, other than using the standalone versions of VSTs, would be probably in a DAW of your choice. Now, DAWs are great, but I don't know about you, a good lot of the time I'll open up my DAW and get the dreaded blank canvas syndrome. So hi, Marty here again with my friends at Gig Performer. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Gig Performer as a central hub so that you can explore all of your um, sound design wonderfulness. That's a word. Now the beauty in this is in the way that you can create any combination of VST instruments and effects inside Gig Performer in a way that you simply can't do in a DAW. Here we have a rack space with two VST instruments layered together. Have a quick listen. So, what's going on here then? If we head round to the rear end of this rack space, which is called the wiring view, we'll see what's going on. Now, we have two synths, both of which are from the uh, lovely people at Cherry Audio, who were very, very, very kind enough to send me a whole bunch of goodies to help make this video. So, thank you so much, Cherry Audio. Here we have Mercury 6 and Pro Soloist. I love this thing. And also for some giggles, I've added Valhalla Shimmer to the audio outputs of Mercury 6. We also have a mixer to mix the two together and some gain and balance so we can alter gain and balance. Mm -hmm. Now, as with all VST instruments and effects, you are awash with an abundance of controls that you can fiddle around with. However, once you've got your basic sound set in, you only tend to kind of play around with things like cough, reverb, effects, some other bits and bobs. You don't need the whole shebang. So if we head back to the panel view, you can see that I have an on off switch, a volume slider for each and some customizable knobs and switches and sliders and all that kind of stuff. Now, if I push this button here to show the VST, which I'll show you how to do shortly. If you watch carefully, when I turn that knob there, it is turning the frequency slider on the VCF section of Mercury 6. We are also controlling the size parameter of Valhalla Shimmer. And on knob 3, the mix value. And in Pro Soloist, when I turn knob 4, you can see the brilliance slider turning up and down. And if you look closely in the phaser section, I am controlling the resonance of the phaser effect. So in essence, you can make up a control panel on the front of the rack space to control only the parameters that you want to control. So let's show you very, very quickly how to set up a very quick rack space for all you Gig Performer newbies. Let's start with a brand new rack space, absolutely nothing in it. Hit the wiring view, right click, 
and choose a synth of your choice. I'm going to go for the fantastic Synthesizer Expander module. And at the time of recording, this is free, so go get it. Quick MIDI up from MIDI output there to the MIDI in of the synth. And you're taking the outputs of your synth to the inputs of your interface. Now, I never tire of drawing these virtual cables in. Bing, bang, bong. Now, obviously, we can put in anything we want. So very quickly, I'm going to add a chorus effect, one of my favorites, Tau Chorus. And we're going to drag that into the audio path of that synth. Hold Shift and job done. There we are. And now we have the synth. But we have no way of controlling it. So head back to Edit. And we're going to set up two or three controls very, very quickly. A volume slider, a knob for controlling, say, the cutoff of the synth. And why not have a big button to turn the chorus on and off? Now, there's two steps to getting this to work. First of all, we have to get your MIDI controller to control these widgets. So let's choose the volume knob, click Learn, and move a controller. Let's now go to the next one, that knob, and let's turn a knob and go to the button and press a button. Step two is to get these now to control your VSTs. Let's choose the volume slider, go down to Mapping, and we'll click on the SEM module. If we click Learn Parameter, as long as that slider is highlighted, all we have to do is move the parameter and you're done. That now is controlling the volume of the synth. Let's now go to the knob, choose the SEM again, Learn Parameter, and this time the VCF Frequency Dial. And finally, the big button, we will choose the Chorus Learn Parameter, and we'll set that to Chorus number one. So now we have Volume Control, Cut off control. And we can turn on the chorus. Now to get your synth to show up on screen by just pressing a button, all you have to do is assign that widget value, open, close the plugin editor, and that will get your synth to show or disappear. Now in this rack space, instead of making up a layer, we're making up a split. The LKX is in the bottom octave. With a bit of cut off control. And the rest of the keyboard has the synthesizer expander module. To set up a split, very simple, go into your MIDI in block and assign a split point by learning your lower range and your upper range for each synth. So quick and simple. Now in this rack space, we are using layers and splits. And because Gig Performer has its own internal clock, you can sync up your step sequences, arpeggiators, drum machines, time-based effects. Yes, indeed, yo. So as you can see here, we have the LFO tool, and that is being run by Gig Performer's internal clock, but only on the GX80. Let's have a listen. There's the LFO tool running, giving you that side chain. And let's open up all of the synths I'm using. Octave cap.
have any external gear like uh, hardware sequences or MIDI controllers that have built-in ARPs in them, etc., you can have some great fun with these. In this rack space, I've got eight VSTs and they're all being run live via my old Korg O1W's uh, internal MIDI sequencer. Let's have a bit of fun. Hit record on Gig Performer and it will record the audio of this performance. So let's click start and I'm going to hit start on the Korg. Give us a minute. Here we go. Some cut off on that mini verse. And a bit of resonance. that into Gig Performer's audio file player and jam along. So as you can see, Gig Performer is not just for live performers, it's great for helping you create new sounds, uh, musical ideas, developing them, recording them in, jamming along with them, all these types of things. So much fun. And I have just touched on the tiniest wee tip of the iceberg of what you can do in here. Your only limitation is your imagination, honestly. So take a wee virtual stroll down to gigperformer.com and pick up a 14 day trial, why not? And on the way back, Pop into uh, cherryaudio.com and see what goodies they have. It's been so much fun making this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, until next time, catch you later.